Belarus, where a number of people have reportedly been killed in a large-scale missile strike on the government's biggest military airbase. That's according to the country's state media. The number of casualties is still unclear. Now, this footage was released by Syrian state uh, media. It reportedly shows the moment of the attack. It's claimed the airfield's uh, missile defences destroyed eight rockets. Uh, some still apparently hit their target. Well, some media outlets were quick to point the finger at Washington, saying it could be behind the attack. Uh, the Pentagon, though, has denied those claims. They've said the U.S. was not conducting military operations against Syria at the time. Now, the airbase uh, in question has previously been targeted. Two months ago, Israeli fighter jets bombed the area. Lebanese media's uh, claimed several Israeli military planes were seen entering Syrian airspace around the time of Monday's attack, although there have been no comments from Israel so far, at least on the case. Well, to discuss the latest, I'm joined live by Sriram uh, Chuulia, a professor and dean at the Jindal School of International uh, Affairs. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good to have you on the programme. Conflicting reports, of course, on who could be behind this uh, strike. Uh, Washington's denied any involvement. Israel's refusing to comment so far either way. What's your take on this? Uh, Daniel, as you know, the Israeli uh, fighter jets have been uh, striking Syria periodically for the last several years. Um, but usually they say that their objective is to disrupt the supply lines of Hezbollah and of uh, Iranian um, allied militias in Syria. Uh, but this attack uh, has come right after uh, an impending, what looks like an impending U.S. missile strike and a, possibly a French missile strike uh, in re response to what they allege is a chemical weapons attack by the uh, Syrian state in Douma. So if the Israelis are involved, it means that they are now being dragged into the core of the conflict. And it's not really about Hezbollah or Iran, really, where um, the Israelis, the Saudi and the U.S., and as well as France, uh, the most hawkish parties in this conflict are looking to somehow uh, dent uh, the Syrian state uh, in a crucial area, uh, war, war zone where, as you know, the Jaish al-Islam group has been operating. And we have to really look at what is the history of the Jaish al-Islam. Because this group is still in control of Douma. They are supposed to have thousands of fighters there. It's a hardline jihadist group has been financed and bankrolled by Saudi Arabia in the past. Why don't they step down? Why don't they allow Duma to be restored to state control? The fighting that's going on, and, they, and by the way, Jaish al-Islam inadvertently admitted in 2016 itself that they were behind um, a chemical attack in Aleppo province. Mm. So they are very much capable of doing these things, and uh, I think it's too premature to judge, uh, to jump to conclusions, and to make this a pretext for either Israeli or French or U.S. Uh, allied uh, raids and attacks. Indeed, and of course we can only speculate uh, on the uh, source of this missile strike as well. An Israeli spokesman, uh, spokeswoman rather, declined to comment. Uh, when asked about these, uh, these attacks on the airbase, although, of course, they, they did launch attacks, as you say, before. Um, what, what response do you expect um, from the Russian government uh, to, to this incident? Well, you know, the thing is that I think um, the Israeli involvement in the war has deepened, and that is a matter of great concern. And I think the most important thing is a diplomatic solution where the Saudis work on their proxies on the ground, and uh, lead to a de-escalation of this whole problem. Uh, that has not uh, been achieved so far because uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman continues to believe that he must uh, counter the Iranian influence in the region. As far as the U.S. goes and, and the Russians go, I think they should be working closely together. President Trump mentioned just a week ago that he wants to pull out of Syria and that he has had enough of it. And then suddenly there was a U-turn. And now there is this attack which seems to pull the U.S. back in in a big way and uh, ensure that they remain there. So if you look at the timing and the sequence of events, uh, as well as the nature of Jaish al-Islam as a group, I think it is foolhardy to simply blame the state for every such attack. There may be responsibility on many sides, but uh, it, should, it is not a one-sided war or definitely not a one-sided uh, chemical warfare that's been going on. So I think we must be clear-headed about this. I think there should be a direct hotline between President Putin and uh, President Trump 
right now it's very important to build confidence between the two leaders and i think that remains even though the state establishments have been at odds with each other and we must prevent any kind of a nato like situation that they did in libya remember in libya in 2011 france and britain were doing the bombing and obama administration was so called leading from behind and if they are saying a coordinated response are we going in another libya like direction well remember already 7 years of war have passed in it and here there are much bigger players like iran and russia involved so i don't think we should allow this to degenerate even further into complete chaos and warfare it's very important that we take a measured response and hold those accountable uh, for these attacks uh, uh, to to justice but not uh, through raining uh, tomahawk missiles or these kind of things because this will inadvertently sure. uh, make the matter Uh, and of course, as you said, uh, important not to jump to premature conclusions either on that uh, alleged chemical incident or on this airstrike. Of course, a full investigation uh, will reveal uh, what party, perhaps multiple parties, were behind both of these incidents. Uh, Sri Ram Shuli, a professor and dean at the Jindal School of International Affairs, thanks for uh, giving us your take today this morning on RT.